Really the focus and the goal of a recommendation engine is to increase video consumption. There's techniques that's called audience similarity, which essentially is predicting what people who have watched this piece of content, what other things have they watched. Behavioral data is a very highly predictive piece of information because, you know, as humans, we are creatures of habits. Now, the way that you distribute this content across all these various internet retailers, if you like, around the world is also affected by artificial intelligence. I would like to go a little bit more granular on these recommenders, okay? How are they used today? So the recommenders and recommendation engine are now present for pretty much every application or video offering available today. I don't think there's a, a single one that kind of doesn't have a recommendation capability. Really the focus and the goal of a recommendation engine is to increase video consumption, but not just increase video consumption, really increase the satisfaction of the user in terms of watching a video. If you have videos, if you have TV shows and programs that are more tailored to what you want to do at that moment in time, and it's very easy for you to find them and discover them, that is, you know, increased satisfaction and therefore you have a more likelihood of using more of that service or continuing paying the subscription fee. So that is really the goal of the recommendation engine, really increase that customer value, or consumer value, and helping consumers discover content across this infinite, almost, almost infinite amount of uh, video and choices that you have with those uh, services. That is the key goal here. Now, how is that being achieved? And, you know, consumer needs kind of support in decision making, and it can happen in many different ways. And I'll give you a few examples of how that could happen. There's techniques that's called audience similarity. Audience similarity is sometimes the technical name, they call it collaborative filtering, which essentially is predicting what people who have watched this piece of content, what other things have they watched. Okay, so that gives you an insight in terms of, okay, this uh, Game of Thrones movie, what the people who watch Game of Thrones, what other piece of content would they watch? And that really helps you, you know, discover additional content that's uh, kind of like, like this one, but consumed by people who have consumed the original uh, piece of content. That's one method. There's other methods such as content-based filtering, which are more kind of the traditional recommender or traditional recommendation engine, which is based on information like actors or synapses or genre. They will find other piece of content that fit those criteria and will recommend you uh, other piece of content based on, on that. Sometimes you have content-based recommendation that's also based on your behavioral data, which is very critical. Behavioral data is a very highly predictive piece of information and oftentimes allows the, the mathematics behind that to do very good recommendation because, you know, as humans, we are creatures of habits. And if I understand your past behavior, I have a very likely word of doing a good guess at, at your future behavior or at what you want at that moment in time. But there's also other piece of recommendation, things like popularity. What is popular now? What is the most watched channel right now? I want to watch that channel because I know my, my colleagues tomorrow at the coffee, during the coffee break, will want to talk about that one. So popularity or trending, what is going up? What is going down? I want to watch the stuff that's going up. So those are other types of recommendation. And oftentimes what happens is the recommendation engines, you know, kind of classify those different types of recommendation. They'll call you, you know, what's on or what's trending or people, customers who bought this also bought this. This is audience similarity. But also oftentimes you also do hybrid recommendations. So you take kind of the best outcome of different algorithm or different classification techniques in order to give you an even better recommendation to really help you navigate through this uh, sea of content and you know making sure that you can 
create that choice and watch content that's really tailored to what you want to do at that moment in time. So this is actually something that was already there. So it's something that's evolving. And it would be interesting to understand how the technology is evolving in the last three to four years, how the mm -hmm. new trends of artificial intelligence have been incorporated. The technology has evolved quite a bit in the past five to 10 years. Some of it is visible to the consumer, some of it is under the hood uh, at the infrastructure level. But there's been substantial change in terms of you know, how data is being collected, processed, and leverage. And it's really the ease of that collection, processing and normalization of the data and the application of algorithm or math on, onto the data as well as how you can leverage the data. You have to remember that a few years back, a lot of the things that we're discussing today was manual. There was very little automation. It was not easy to access the data. It was not easy to cleanse the data. It was not easy to use AI or machine learning or deep learning framework. A lot of this had to be done uh, manually, which was obviously very time consuming. So it's, it wasn't that it was not possible to do. It was that the effort to do it was quite substantial and you know difficult to deploy in a real world uh, situation. So this is the fundamental shift that, that really um, happened in the last uh, couple of years. And with that, you know, many things have come up from a technical point of view. So for instance, you know, there's a lot of new open source frameworks that you can now leverage in the big data space or in the AI space that makes it a lot easier for companies to uh, create those type of uh, solution and launch those type of solutions. So those are the fundamental uh, changes that have happened and the convergence of those capability to collect, process, normalize and leverage both in, you know, in uh, even live, you know, even in, in real time or in very near real time, which was almost impossible five or 10 years ago because a lot of the infrastructure was batched. So it was uh, sequential one after the other and you couldn't really have that kind of very dynamic real-time nature of recommendation engine or uh, you know, other, other solutions where you need to leverage uh, AI in, in decision-making.